one, take it away. All right, thanks so much. Hey, Bob, how are you? I'm good, I'm good, how are you? <laughs> good, I just wanted to let you know that I'm doing the universal generics. So this actually goes out to everyone who can't be here for the junket mm -hmm. and they miss out on you. So if you could wrap my question into your answer, that'd be fantastic. Thank you. So um, I think I'm just such a huge fan. I think I could watch Peel and Orange and get excited. So let's start at the beginning and talk about how this story really came out of a personal experience and how nobody grew up from there. Yes, well, the movie Nobody does originate from a personal experience. Um, I live in a city, I live in Los Angeles, and we had a, a home break in at our house with a person who was uh, on different substances. And as a result, they were not really um, present. So it was a dangerous and scary uh, experience for my family. Uh, we kept things uh, to minimum amount of damage and danger. And the police came and took the person away. And the remains though was a feeling of frustration and, and, and anger. And I thought I could tap into that to launch a, an action character's journey of vengeance. Um, so I, it was to use those feelings and to play them out on the screen uh, in a safe uh, place, <laughs> not in reality. But uh, it did come originate from a, a, a true experience. But of course, the movie Nobody goes to mythic places with uh, bad guys representing the Russian mob and my character having a past as a very violent guy. Um, so it, it starts in a kind of very real feeling place, but it goes to a magical, big conceptualized world. And uh, it's great fun. I mean, this conceptualized world and this character of Hutch with that huge backstory, it seems a little bit out of your comedic wheelhouse, if you will. What excited you most about playing him? Well, one of the things I've learned, oh, what excited me about playing the uh, character of Hutch Mansell in Nobody is, as an actor, I've discovered the joy of playing someone who's very different from who you are. It's really the reward of acting, I think, is to go somewhere different inside you and, uh, and, and see the world through other uh, different person's eyes. Uh, it's certainly true in the TV shows I've been in, Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, I play a person who's not at all like me and not someone I would even be around, I think, if I had the choice. <laughs> but it, seeing the world through their eyes is an experience that is a real um, excitement for an actor. And so in this movie, nobody, I play Hutch Mansell, who's got this history as a fighting agent for, you could say, the DEA, the CIA, the FBI, Interpol, who knows? He just did some really violent stuff. That's not me at all. Um, and it's, it's fun to take the fantasy of a movie scenario and be someone very, very different from who you really are. It's like a weird little vacation from being yourself. And then you get to come back to your nice, safe life. Well, this, I, I think that the character that you play, you ground so much in reality as well. Um, it's a character that everyone can relate to. Can you speak about that? Well, look, I do think the character in Nobody is relatable to a lot of people. And I, I even think of this great moment where I've got the gun out and I'm yelling, give me the kitty cat bracelet. <laughs> and I'm really mad. And I just picture every parent mm -hmm in the back seat of their car, trying to find the kitty cat bracelet or the thing that their child lost that means so much to their kid and they're frustrated and they've got 30 things to do right now and they can't find that damn bracelet. And they, in their mind, they're feeling the way Hutch is with the gun out, give me that goddamn kitty cat bracelet. So there's a lot of feelings in it that are blown up to mythic proportions in our movie but they're relatable, you know? Um, the feeling of having, you know, kids, but having your neighbor who's like a single guy who's got a really cool sports car and he's bragging about it to you and your son and your son kind of looks at him and thinks, that guy's cool, my dad isn't cool. Mm -hmm. And you're the dad sitting there going, yeah, 
whatever, I'm not cool. <laughs> I wish I had your car and you wish you could steal it and go on a joyride like Hutch does. There are so many, and again, it's blown up into a big fable, but the feelings are the feelings of being a good parent who tamps it down, maintains equilibrium, doesn't let their feelings carry them away and manages life as you're supposed to. But in a movie, you get to just go off unhinged off on a, on a mythic quest, you know, that's what movies can be. So let's talk about preparing for this movie because I think you're probably going to go down in history for the two years of training that you did. So can you talk about that? And more importantly, are you still training? <laughs> I trained for two years to play the character Hutch Mansell in Nobody. I wanted to do my own screen fighting. Uh, and I spent 25 years of my life writing comedy. Um, and I love writing comedy. I love being a part of that world, but you don't, you don't work out a lot. <laughs> but I had also, I also, I hadn't hurt myself while I was doing that. My back was fine. My knees are fine. So I was in pretty good shape. I did cardio. So I thought I'll just train really hard. You know, I'll start from the ground up and I'll put in my 10,000 hours, which is what I did. I would go to the gym two or three times a week. I'd work out on the days I didn't go to the gym, but I would go to the stunt training gym and get professional training two or three days a week. And I did that for two years before we uh, began filming. Um, what was your other question? Oh, let me just go straight into talking about working with the brilliance of Ilya and also bringing Christopher Lloyd into the fold because those are two really important points, please. Yeah. So in the course of developing the movie Nobody, um, we put together an amazing team, starting with the writer, Derek Kolstad, who wrote all the John Wick films. Derek just thinks in these amazing movie cinematic scenes and mythic story with bad guys from a shady past coming back to haunt you. And we got this great director, Ilya Nyshuler, who's a Russian director who made a great little film called Hardcore Henry, made on a shoestring. It's a first person action movie uh, that he made with friends and it's a great feature. If you like action films, check out Hardcore Henry. And then we put together an amazing cast, which included Christopher Lloyd, who you might know from the Back to the Future films. Christopher was so great and has never done an action movie until this one and was really excited also to train not for physical fighting, but for gun work and, and to get to use, he's got like five shotguns hanging from his neck. And he had a great time making the movie and I loved meeting him and working with him. Perfect, thank you so much. It was such a brilliant film. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks so much. Hop off, get everyone rolling. You can state your name and I'll let him begin. Hey, I'm Chi Lan with the Universal Generics. Um, Riza, I just wanted to let you know that I'm doing the generic for Universal. So that means that this goes out to everyone who couldn't be here for the junket. So if you can just wrap my question into your answer, I'd really appreciate it. Okay, is that gonna work for you for the beat for me in the car like this? It's all good. Hey, if that's where you are, that's where I have you, sir. <laughs> oh, I like that. What a world we in today. I, I know, cool. right? <laughs> <laughs> so I mean I also like I make one joke. I'm uh, glad I'm not on a on a toilet. <laughs> uh, small miracles today i think so i have to appreciate that about you <laughs> so i have to say you're an incredible incredible rapper musician actor and then you get a call to work on a movie alongside bob odenkirk and christopher lloyd what did you think well crazy when i when i when i read the script i was like wow this is fun right and then um and when you get it, sometimes you don't get the cast who's going to be in there, right? And then when they told me who it was, I was like, wait a minute. You know, of course, I'm a fan of Bob Odenkirk, and you watch him in Better Call Saul. And, 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 but Christopher Lloyd, <laughs> it's like, that's like a childhood hero, right? You know, I'm trying to go back to the future. It's like, I'm back to the future. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, I'm in some other space world 
working with him. So it was it was that 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 was really something that was hard to say no to. And it must have been so much fun on set working with those two because you guys have some really intense scenes. Yeah, working on set with Christopher Lloyd and Bob Odenkirk was um, man stimulating, fun, historical, uh, and 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 just something that you know what that if they wanted to, if they wanted to do it again, I would. You know, I, I I'm open for a second date on this one. <laughs> So you swipe right on this one. <laughs> so, um, I mean, you, you had to do some intense scenes. So let's talk a little bit about the training, the physical training that you actually did to prepare yourself. Yeah. So, you know, the, you know, you know, the team, you know, you know, we got the producers of John Wick here, right? So they are very, they specialize in action. And it's one of the best teams in the business. And for me to, um, you know, to get there. I wasn't in my best shape, I will say, right? Um, but I'm always in good enough shape. Like I say in good enough shape. And they gave me the routines of what I needed to do. And I just kept going, kept doing them, kept doing them. And when it came time to shoot, I was I was ready. Uh, I definitely would say that I felt the pain later. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was like, you know, when I got back on the plane and headed back uh, to my family, I felt the pain of what I did. Fair enough. <laughs> so let's talk about Ilya because he has such an incredible vision, right? With all of this amazing action, it's almost poetic, but at the same time, you get this incredible story with a huge backstory. Tell me about working with this director. Well, Ilya is, is you know, I was a fan of his from Hardcore Henry. Um, and his style of filmmaking is, is very visceral. But yet it's very, uh, it has, it has a, a unique humor to it as well. And working with him, you know, his choice of shots and his setups was, you know, was inspiring in all reality. He did once, he did this one idea of where uh, Bob's character Hutch will throw the gun and my character Harry will catch it midair mm -hmm. and then shoot somebody. And you know, it was just a unique idea of how he had to rig everything. And, and he actually had the camera, and I can say this, this a little spoiler. He had the camera on a, a revolving uh, bar, right? So I haven't seen that setup. I mean, I've seen study cams kind of do like maybe 180, even 240s. But this 360 thing was something I, I haven't seen. And he prepared the shot like that, and it, it really was cool. So this guy... We're gonna watch out for him. I'm sure he's gonna have a lot of fun making movies for us. And the action scenes that you see, I mean, um, tell me about some of the action scenes that we see in this film, because it's really satisfying. You know, the action scenes in this film, I'm not gonna talk about myself, uh, um, because, you know, I don't have to do that, right? But, but I wanna talk about Bob Odenkirk. When this man gets on the bus, <laughs> and he gets thrown off the bus, and then he gets back on the bus, that sequence of events and that visceral action uh, has to definitely go up into that top 10 fight sequences that, you know, people got their little top 10 list. I think he's going to be a candidate to enter a top 10 list because, it's, it, you know, when I got the set, they had already shot all that, right? And so, you know, I'm getting there, you know, I'm, I'm fresh. And they're like, uh, you know, I'm asking directly, you know, you know, some, you know, what's going on? You know, you want to get acquainted. And he said, okay, I'm gonna show you something. And they showed me that scene. And I just remember going back to my hotel, doing my push-ups, doing everything to get ready so that I could at least do a good scene as well. Because that scene, it was almost like, it gave me the confidence that this movie is gonna be crazy. Nice. I mean, when I saw the movie, I, I could not believe what an action hero that Bob became. I mean, did that surprise you? Like how much, force and fierceness he had, like a little cage tiger that was just released yeah. in the wild. You know, I had a chance to talk to him a little bit about about it after, you know, after I watched, I said, Bob, damn, like, you know, excuse my language. I was like, damn, Bob, you in there, you, you going bananas in there, what's up? He's like, yo, he's been training for over a year for this. So, and that goes back to something that I know a lot of people who watch movies, they enjoy them and they have fun. And one thing they may not understand is that movies take a lot of preparation. And to play a role that Bob has played many roles, he can make us laugh, he can make us feel dangerous, uh, he can make you cry. 
But here he transforms himself to a total action hero. Mm -hmm. And of course, that's a tribute to his talent, but it's also a tribute to preparation. May I ask you to just turn your camera a little bit? I'm getting a lot of sun. There you go. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just getting a lot of sun and I couldn't see your face that well. Thank you. Okay. So let's talk a little bit more about the film and how I just feel as if it's a film that everyone can relate to. Can you talk about that, how everyone can relate to the film? You know, I think everybody could relate to this film because the film, once again, is rooted in family, right? Anytime something is rooted in family, we all can find our relations. But the film also is rooted in discovery, right? And rediscovery. Discovery of yourself is one thing. Rediscovery of yourself is another thing. And I think the character Hutch, he goes through both. He discovers himself as a family man, which is the warm love you want to have in life. Hopefully everybody get a chance to get love and warm, right? But then you rediscover yourself because you could take the lion out of the jungle, right? But you can't take the, uh, the jungle out of the lion. And in this case, he shows that the jungle is still in him. You know, you put the lion in the zoo, he'll be okay, he'll be quiet, he'll chill out. But that animal will still have that fierce nature. And I think that we can relate to that because sometimes, you know, whether you're at work, whether you're in school, whether you're playing sports, you know, there's something in you that's in inherent that wants to come out, that wants to be its best, and that wants to be its natural expression. And you know, Bob says he's nobody, right? The movie's called Nobody. He says, God says, who are you? He says, I'm nobody. But then there's a part of him that's everybody. <laughs> is that what you, attracted you most to this film? The fact that he is nobody yet everybody? Yeah, exactly. Because I actually felt that in my life, you know, as an as a, as a artist, though, as an artist, I felt like, you know, my lyricism, my music, you know, was bottled up. And I was really ready to change it just to get my foot in the game. You know what I mean? I was ready to just, hey, okay, I'll put that, 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 that tuxedo on if you want me to, because I wanted to so much to be engaged and involved with the industry. But then when I took that tuxedo off and I was able to put my hoodie back on and able to take my hair, wild style my hair as much as I wanted, the true me showed up and it actually worked for me. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I was able to build a career off of being myself. But it's something that um that this that the script related, you know, I read it and I related to it. Then I looked at the character Harry, and I was like, he he seems like a guy who walked away from everything, but for family, he'll come back. And that is my personality. You know, it matches my personality. I'm the type of guy that you can you can rely on. You know, if you think about me, if you think about the RZA, excuse uh, excuse my camera angles here. Yeah, but um, now. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I'm you. You can rely on me if you need me. I'm going to show up, and that's what Harry is in this film. He's somebody that he's needed by the family. He's going to show up for the family. Perfect. Thank you so much. It was such a pleasure to meet you, and congratulations. You're phenomenal in the film. So good. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great day. Pleasure. Capture, please. I'm going to go ahead and hide my video for y'all. And then if you could just begin the, the interview by oh, stating your name. I don't see Alba. Tani yet. Is she... Oh, you don't see Tani? No, I don't. Really? No. Oh, it's, are you on speaker view? It's probably because she hasn't spoken yet. Oh, yes. Can you hear me now? Is oh, that... hi! There you are. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> there you go. All right. I've hidden my camera. I'm just going to get out of your way. Go ahead. Um, but okay. Shilan, if you could just begin by stating your name and outlet for the editor and then proceed. Okay. Hi, I'm Shilani with Universal Generics. Connie, I just wanted to start by letting you know that I'm doing the generics. So everyone who couldn't be at the junket, they're gonna get this interview. And you were fantastic in it, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, I just wanted to talk to you about what attracted you most to this role and this story? So I felt like, you know, when you see a, uh, an action movie, it's rare where you see like this level of honesty about what's it like to be a guy, you know? just living a normal life. Um, your wife is earning more money than you are and you are working at her dad's place and with her asshole brother. And, you know, you feel, you take the bus every day and you feel like you are nobody. What does that do to your marriage? How, you know, what does it do to how you feel about yourself? And I think 
in that way, I think is just really smart. It really speaks to the experience of a lot of guys and especially when viewed against the lens of masculinity and how, you know, what pressure is being put on guys to be like all these, like, like you have to be rich, you have to be super successful, you have to be strong, you have to have a six pack, you have to never be scared. And that is almost impossible. And so in this fantasy, here's a guy who actually is so much like the guys that, uh, you know, are at home watching and, but they, they get this, this fantasy fulfillment of, oh, what if I wake up and I become that tiger that I really am inside and I really uh, just embrace my own power, <laughs> you know, in, in an action film that means knowing how to do action. And, um, and then, and that, in fact, you know, waking up and, and, and looking, taking a look at yourself and stating, I'm not happy this way and I've had enough. Can that re, you know, reignite your relationship? Yeah, it, I think it just really grounded the film and it made it so wonderful. And you and Bob just have incredible chemistry, the way that you're able to carry that honesty. Can you talk about working with him? Yeah, I think we just both are just like very intuitive people. And he's a very intuitive guy in addition to being really fun. And I think we both just came from, you know, experience, like life experience and just being, you know, relationships can be hard. And, and I think we just went for the truth of the moment, you know, the truth of what was written into the scenes. And I think that really uh, felt true, you know, when we were doing the scenes as well. And it was really nice because, you know, we were out in like normal houses, normal things. And you don't get to see that either uh, very much in, in, in films, you know, just like, what's it like to be Mr. and Mrs. Nobody, you know, somebody, like, and that's the majority of people in this world. And I, thought, I just really liked being inside of that story, like normal people. Yeah, it really felt like it was relatable. Everything yeah. about this movie is relatable. But yeah. one thing that, that really surprised me as a viewer is Bob transforming into this auditor. And I feel like you saw that being your character in the film. Were you surprised at how he transformed during shooting? I, I was really sort of like, I was, I was astounded by how he even had like just the bandwidth to be all that he was producing, he was working out, he was shooting till all hours uh, of the morning, shooting these in, in like a super frigging cold place. And as someone who is sensitive to cold, I totally could not understand how he was able to do that. And he did, it was just amazing. That's amazing. And let's talk a little bit about working with Ilya because I feel like he's such a master at action, but at the same time, he has like this poeticism to it. Can you talk about how he, was, how he was able to combine that and create this vision? So I'd, I'd read about what he'd done before, obviously. And oh, um, I, would you mind just mentioning the director's name for me? Yes. So okay. I'd, I'd read about what Ilya had been doing before. And I was just kind of like, oh, that's so great. Like you have a band, but you also make videos and you're doing action films. Like that's, that's pretty crazy. And then you meet him and he's just such an unassuming, relaxed, guy you know really just kind and uh and and make sure that everybody feels uh heard on the set and just felt uh it was just a really pleasant experience uh to work with him that's amazing and i feel as if this action movie is honestly it's just full of surprises can you talk to me about what what type of audience this movie is made for like who will really relate to it pretty much everybody right i think that anybody who likes to just see a well-crafted story uh, and, and, and take you into that universe a little bit the way that John Wick does, where it kind of doesn't have, it's sort of like not reality, it's more sort of like a heightened reality um, and, and, and more based on adventure and, um, and, 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 and fantasy rather than, you know, and at the same time has like, the grittiness of, 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 of what would normally be a realism, uh, a kind of realism movie. Um, so I think that anybody who just wants to just take a break from all of the stuff that's going on in your real life and just come and watch a fun, 
uh, uh, ride. You know, that's what this film is. It, it's it's just a fun ride, but it has moments of truth and and depth to it that that I think makes it even easier for you to just like meld in and 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 live with the characters. And I gotta ask you because you mentioned how much fun it was working with Bob. Can you tell me a fun story that uh, that wasn't captured on screen or anything? <laughs> Uh, well, did. like I think, like the first day we're on set, you know, we get, basically get to meet on the first day on set, and then um, I'm led from makeup and hair tests down to like the studio floor, which is kind of freezing and cold, in like a summer dress, and there is like a box on the cement floor with like a green screen backdrop, and then Bob comes along in his like Bahamas shorts and a t-shirt and we're supposed to be doing like pictures of our whole story like as if you know this is our love story and I was it was like almost like indescribably absurd to be sitting in a sandbox and like smiling away as if we're having like two margaritas just out of sight and it was it was that was our first day yeah <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much. Congratulations on this film. You're incredible in it. It is incredible. Thank you. Thank you. And Chilon, you're clear to say your name, Alan, and begin. Oh. You're muted. Hi. I, I still don't see Kelly, though. I was wondering. Oh. Oh, there you are. Hi. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, I just wanted to let you know, Kelly, that I'm doing the generics. So for the people that couldn't be a part of this junket, this will go out to everyone. Okay. So if you could wrap my question into your answer, that'd be fantastic. I know, pressure. <laughs> you look beautiful, by the way. Oh, um, so much. Fantastic. You. <laughs> so let's just get right into it because I had read that you were a huge fan of Bob's work. I mean, who isn't? Um, but when you look at him, what made you think that he is going to be the next big action star? <laughs> well, I am a huge fan of Bob Odenkirk, and I think it's, he's, he is the most unexpected a action star potentially, which is why it's so exciting that he's an action star now. <laughs> so I think I was most excited about the idea that he is exactly who you wouldn't expect and yet delivers um, pound for pound. He's, uh, he's amazing. He absolutely is. Um, when you first heard about this movie, however, and the story, what excited you most about the project? Yeah, when I first heard about the story, it was sort of a combination of things. Um, first, you know, at 87 North, we're always looking for opportunities to find characters that are really complex, that are layered and detailed and specific and have, you know, really special arcs that relate to some of the experiences that we're all having in our normal lives. And um, this did that in spades and then allowed you to talk about subject matter like you know, underappreciated dads and getting your mojo back and, um, you know, and, and, and then gave you this context of like, how does this guy fight? What does he use to get through the day and to like, you know, really get to what he, he needs out of it? I thought that this action film was really different in that it actually treated life very honestly, right? It got gritty with the action and then it also gets really gritty with what happens in a marriage and with kids and stuff. Can you talk about those things? Yeah, I mean, the themes of the movie are sort of that. It's sort of like, you know, Hutch bought into the American dream. White picket fence, you know, wife, two kids, the perfect sort of situation. He's got a nine to five that has probably turned him off to some degree. He's just kind of going through the motions. And when he has, you know, and when his domain is invaded and he doesn't have the wherewithal and the propensity to like fight back, he, I think it's really mad at himself. And I think he's like, oh, wow. It, I think it's a revelation that I'm not doing all I can to protect my family, to protect my home, to be my best self. And I'm, and, and something, flips and he decides to get his mojo back. And in the in the meantime, the family realizes that he's changing too. And Connie and he find a path back because there's a lot of love there all the way through. It's just been lost in the mundaneness of just ordinary sort of patterns. And, um, you know, and, and then why not bring that, heighten that to the point where we're also like kicking ass the whole time. <laughs> And speaking about him getting his mojo and that transformation, were you surprised at Bob Odenkirk's transformation into this mythic action hero? I, I don't know. 
was I surprised by Bob's um, transformation? I wasn't, I wasn't. He put the work in. Um, he had the desire and, you know, he is, and, and his comedy is biting, you know? So it's like, he's got that, like something. So it's like, just change it from jokes to like physicality and here we go. <laughs> And speaking about the physicality, I mean, the action is so gritty. It's so real. How were you guys able to achieve that? We were able to achieve the action by, honestly, that's what 87 North does, is, you know, bring amazing directors with bold choices behind them, good, great ideas. You know, in Ilya, we found a tremendous partner in that way. And then support them with an action team that we've trained, that we, you know, trust, and that can be there sort of um, to come up with the ideas and also to incorporate the ideas from a great director who comes, you know, who has a lot of action in his background as well. So it was kind of the perfect, you know, the perfect kind of one to punch that way, so to speak. Um, and so it worked out really well. And speak a little bit more about Ilya's vision, because I feel like uh, he's so incredible with action, but he also has this poeticism about how he presents the story as well as the action. Can you speak about working with him? Yeah, I mean, Ilya Neischuller is, I'm a huge fan. At first, I've loved him since Biting Elbows, if you haven't seen it. it it's a music video that he did that's first person as well. And, um, you know, it's bold, it's interesting, it's poetic, to your point. And, um, you know, I think in that he proves that he is lyrical in um, action, but also in drama. And I, I really think he brought, you know, he allowed for everybody to bring their best selves and their best ideas to the table and then guided them into what he, you know, saw and wanted um, out of the arc of the characters as well as the arc of the action. I, he's a real talent. Amazing. And talk more about um, some of the cast that you assembled because the talent is incredible, including Christopher Lloyd. I mean, who doesn't want to see Christopher Lloyd in an action film? Yeah, the talent who came together on this is like a dream cast for this movie. Um, you know, Connie brings this warmth to a character that could have gone really cold. You know, it had to feel like there was real love there, even though they were having a hard time. Um, and, um, and, and then thus allow to come back to a warmer spot when things were, you know, kind of happening in the, you know, ha uh, better in the relationship. Um, you know, Christopher Lloyd is an inspiration. I mean, he came up actually a little bit late in the process in the sense that like, it was like, oh, who's gonna play Bob's dad? Like, and we were just busy, you know, getting these Russians that Ilya had friends, friends that he was bringing in. And like, we were just busy, busy, busy. And then it was like, oh my God, who's gonna play Bob's dad? It's actually really hard if you think about it. And I think Bob came up with the idea that it was like Christopher Lloyd and it was just like, oh my God, that's like the, <laughs> best idea ever. Where has that guy been? You know, like such a talent, by the way, also comedian. And, you know, how do we kind of like, how do we get him? And like literally set, you know, Universal supported it immediately. We got him the script and within a week he was in conversations and I can't imagine anybody else in the role. He's so phenomenal in it. <laughs> but I have to get back to 87 North because you guys um, are known, you're the woman behind some of the most iconic action <laughs> sequences like this staircase sequence from Atomic Blonde and this and John Wick. And... Okay, so you have all of these iconic action scenes that you created in the past. So can audiences expect more iconic action sequences from nobody? Audiences can expect more dynamic, original action sequences from nobody and quite honestly, anything 87 North does. Um, because, you know, it comes from the character. So as long as you're finding the characters and thinking about what they do and how they feel and what they would do in a dangerous situation is how you get that originality. Just a tip. <laughs> but that's our goal every time out. But thank you very much. And thank you for saying that I'm a woman behind the action. I really appreciate it. You are, that. it's incredible. I love that I get to speak to you about this. But, um, <laughs> you know, being a woman behind one of these action films, I feel like this isn't just an action film that every, you know, that most people can see. It's like someone that, I, I love this movie. You know, can you tell me how this is like a movie that everyone can kind of glom onto and really, really sink their teeth in and enjoy it? Yeah, I mean, nobody is honestly a phenomenal picture it's about a guy you know it's about a guy feeling of you know how a lot of people feel in life turned off shut down how do we get our mojo back and that theme um coupled with extraordinary action that you've never seen before is why you want to go to this movie you are so phenomenal thank you so much for your time i am so appreciative and this film is 
brilliant. Thank you. Oh, thank you, thank so you so much. Thank, thank you. So much. Bye. Have a good day. Thank you, Chilan.